So I'm going to do a general demo of all the materials that we have available um, and I'll run through them so that you know what's here. I've made a strong brew of tea here, um, a very strong one of instant coffee. There's about a tablespoon of instant coffee here. Um, there's some black ink or dye. So there's more here. The best one to use would be the Parker or the Pelican ink um, or just a Teddy dye um, because those react with the bleach which we have here. Um, and in those little pots there are all sorts of fabric dyes. But if you don't have those, you can use substitutes. You can use, for example, red wine or um, food dyes. Or you can take some turmeric and dilute it and make a beautiful yellow. So there's always things that can be used as substitutes. So. In terms of tools and applicators, um, I picked a little bit sprig of rosemary from the garden. There's a feather, um, a kebab stick, a sushi stick, various brushes, the humble but faithful pencil, and on my right, closer to the bleach, I put these materials which are specific to bleach. So instead of using a, this kind of brush, you're going to use a toothbrush because if you dip a brush into bleach, it's going to corrode all the bristles and you'll end up with a little stumpy of a brush. So the toothbrush you can use and sticks, an earbud, you can dip a branch of um, rosemary and there's a little bit of a sponge and an old piece of hessian and I'll show you how we're going to use those just now. So here we are we've got a big piece of paper which is quite strong it's about 240 grams um, and often that incredibly pristine surface looks very intimidating. And for me, what I often do is I just start with a very playful, um, making a playful base um, to almost baptize the page and give it a different character, knowing full well that um, I will be able to, to change that um, afterwards. So, just put that there. So here is just water which um, we can just apply to create a surface that is not very stable um, and by saying that what I mean is that if now um, It doesn't really matter what you're doing here now. Um, now I could drop some black and of course because it's wet here it's going to start spreading which gives me a lot of freedom. Um, as I said I do know that this whatever I'm doing now can be changed going forward. It's just a a playful start to the artwork. Um, so I can just tip it also and make it go places and also maybe add something else. Um, so let's just put a little bit of tea and of course they're going to run into each other. And I'm just really inaugurating the page without knowing what I'm doing here um, and if you want to see what the darker brown gives it's um, a little bit richer so that is going to play with the 
other things on the page. And then I could even put a little bit of blue in somewhere. Um, I could just drop some. And tilt it around and also make it do things. Um, that is an incredible blue which I'm afraid you can only get from the very expensive inks of Parker or Pelican, but um, it is a very vibrant color, which is beautiful to work with. So sometimes color as a base is something that gives a mood to the, the artwork. Um, so I could carry on now and just add other bits and pieces. Um, but what I would like to show you is, for example, if I were to take an oil pastel, um, I've taken white here, or you could take another light color. If you work with a light color, it's better because it shows up. Um, so on the dry piece of the paper, I'm just going to make a few marks. Um, and be quite loose about them and then apply a, a wash over um, just to show you what we call wax resist which means that what I brush over now is going to be resisted by the oil pastel and it will start shining through and as you can see, this is a beautiful brush because it leaves lovely marks of the bristles. And these can also become a sort of mark making in and of themselves. So playing with marks is what creates um, a sort of interest. You know, I can do little pirouettes here with a brush. Um, so I'm just showing you the different things that the brush can do. I can make cross hatchings, um, etc. Um, so the other thing we could do is try working with a stick. And you could dip the stick into this black ink. And if I'm working on something that's very wet, I'm not going to have much control and my line is going to start um, spreading. And it will help me abdicate control, as it were. If I did it on a dry piece, then of course here I have much better control of the line. But I could also be playful and think, well, instead of using this with its point, maybe I could use it with its um, on its side and just experiment with what kind of jerky marks it makes on the page when you spread it. It makes other kinds of marks. Um, so I think the whole, what I'm trying to say is that just be playful with your applicators. Just be aware of what kind of marks you're leaving. You could even try and, and draw with this because you have very little control. Um, and that giving up the control is very much part of this kind of work. Um, and the feather can do other things. So here you almost get little imprints, which are rather beautiful. So that's really a quick start of 
playing with the surface, knowing, as I said earlier, that all this can change radically afterwards. So, personally, I wouldn't mind um, just getting rid of a lot of the white. Um, just to create something else here and even just quite a watery part um, so that's quite a lively surface to start with um, which then we can add to or collage over so, the one thing I haven't shown you, which is quite magical, is uh, what happens with the bleach. So, the bleach takes a long time to have an effect. Um, so, be patient with it, because it will come, it will happen. Um, so if I were to drop the bleach into a wet puddle here, um, once again, it's not going to be easy to control because it's going to spread and do its own thing. But if I were to work somewhere where it was dry, um, I would be able to, to really draw with it um, and trace very clear lines. Um, you'll see this appearing slowly. If I wanted a thicker line, I would use the earbud. Um, up. And then the other thing, can you see it's coming up here? The other thing I can do is I can dip the toothbrush into the bleach and um, just splash it on and watch it appear or even if I wanted brush marks I could actually use the the side of the toothbrush like like a paintbrush so that's all going to start happening the other thing that you can do is you can take something that is porous like the sponge and and wet it just a little bit with the bleach and then use it to leave an imprint which can be quite organic and beautiful and you can do the same thing with something like hessian which has a texture and um, introduce Maybe it's a bit wet. So it's it's immediately started to work here and this sponge area is beginning to show. Those marks are just appearing. So the the trick with using bleach is not to be too impatient because you could think, oh, it's not working, let me put more, let me put more, and then suddenly you look and your whole artwork has, <laughs> has disappeared. So, so that's quite a nice, interesting base if I wanted then to add other elements or to um, collage pieces, other pieces on top. Um, and it's also given me an opportunity to, to show you how materials work on, on the page. Um, to caution you that if you were to use um, oil pastels now on a wet part, it's going to um, start making a hole and kind of not really working that well. It's better to wait until this dries before coming in with, with um, oil pastels. Um, the chalk pastels, though, are different because they dilute with the water. So, for example, um, 
this line, um, I could actually um, wet it and then it will behave like a watercolour and it will dilute and become much softer. If you would like to um, soften the effect of a, an oil pastel, you can use a little bit of a, let me find a dry patch here. Um, let's say I wanted to combine two colors on the page, um, the red and uh, a pink. Let me get the pink. Put that next to it but I don't want them to be separate I want them to kind of glide into each other I would use a little drop of oil uh, here we are and maybe with a finger fingers are always good um, just massage the two together to soften the transition between the pink and the blue so that's something that is a useful little trick to use if you want to blend oil pastels. Oil is the, the thing to use. So that's that for now. Um, and I hope you realize that this is just a base now that can take other additional bits on top of it.